Hello YouTube, this is a follow up video to my earlier videos about Denise Chavez Goforth and her claims that Jupiter and Saturn have tilted on their axes. Now this is a second uh, video specifically about her claims regarding Jupiter and we're going to take a closer look at the images involved in, in her video. First of all let's um, jump ahead to um, 4 minutes 10 seconds in her video, Nibiru, the verdict is in regarding pole shift. There you have it. This is Jupiter today. It's right on its side. These little red things here are Jupiter's rings. That's how we know it's on its side. Okay. She's just said that uh, this is Jupiter on the 18th of December, Jupiter today and uh, she has pointed to what she calls the rings and has claimed that that is how we know that Jupiter is on its side. Um, I searched the, uh, the Bradford Robotic Telescope site for images of uh, Jupiter on the 18th of December and could not find this image. Um, then I searched a few days either side and I did manage to find the image uh, using Starry Night Pro I was able to step through several hours at a time and narrowed the time down to the early hours of 17th of December 2012. As you can see here we've got Europa, Ganymede, Io and Callisto which are all, uh, the four main moons of Jupiter and if we compare it to the image in Denise's video you can see that they match. So after that I went to the Bradford Robotic Telescope site and uh, did the search on the uh, 17th of December. Remember we're looking at the completion time, not the submit time. This is the time that the images were taken. And it so happens that the image that's used in Denise's video is the very first job that was done. This is at uh, 039. So if I click on the, uh, the job and pull up the JPEG, here is the job data can see it's for Jupiter the exposure time is 30 milliseconds remember the exposure time for her image of Saturn in the other video was 1000 milliseconds which is one second you can see that the completion time is 039.03 UTC so that's 39 minutes past midnight UTC uh, let's scroll down and here is the image that she used in her video I'll just step back to her video so we can compare them as you can see it is the same image, we've got the, the four moons um, orientated the, the same way, same positions and it agrees with my screenshot from Starry Night. Some people criticise my use of Starry Night saying that it's a simulation program. Yes it is a simulation program and it is very accurate. And this has been um, proven by the fact that the image from uh, Bradford Robotic Telescope completely agrees with the results from Starry Night Pro at that exact same time. Now, if we go back to the search results for the 17th of uh, December, and remember she claimed that the image was on the 18th of December, but that's a small matter. It does make a difference, however, when you're trying to track down the information so that you can verify it. So her image was the first one in the list. As you can see that there are 17 results for the 17th of December. We could look at each image one by one but it would take a long time to pull them up. I've already downloaded them and we're going to take a look at them here. Here is the first image. Again it is the one that is used in Denise's video which we've already verified. And then there are the other 16 images that were taken on the 17th. Now you can see that I've included the, the time that the image was taken, the first six digits of the file name. I've also included the exposure time and I've included the type of filters that were used, the last three letters. So the image that Denise used was taken at 30 milliseconds. 
the one that was taken uh, just a few minutes later, about seven minutes later, this one was taken at 100,000 milliseconds and you can see the, the bright spike of light that we've got there. This is way overexposed obviously. Uh, seconds later this one was taken and you can see the, the, um, the bleeding of the light, um, the blurring. I'll bring that one up closer so you can have a good look at it. And again in this one because it's so overexposed we can clearly see those four moons of Jupiter which agree with the uh, screenshot from Starry Night. Uh, here are the other images. I'll quickly step through them. I think you get the idea. This one is also overexposed, as is this one. Uh, this one is very similar to the one that was taken uh, by Denise, or I believe it was taken by Tiff Pardo and passed on to Denise. Now this image is starting to look more like it should do. This one was taken at 30 milliseconds with a neutral density filter number 3, though the picture is grainy. There are several images that can be stacked from these results which I'll show you soon. Here is another one that is, is way overexposed and this one is interesting because it was taken at 1000 milliseconds which was the same exposure time as the image of Saturn that was used in the other video. It has the same type of filter, BVR. Um, no, actually I think the other one had no filter on it, if my memory serves me correctly. But you can see that the, uh, the time, the exposure is set this, the same. And we have this huge spike of light. In this case it's in colour. And again overexposed this one is more like it, 50 milliseconds with a different type of filter. So here are all these images that were all taken by the same telescope, the same Bradford Robotic Telescope, on the same night, only minutes and sometimes seconds apart. Yet we don't see the, the spiking, the, the so-called rings as claimed by Denise Chavez Goforth. Now, in the clearer images, you can actually see um, the, the cloud belts across Jupiter. You can just make it out in this image. We've got some lines across here. This proves, along with the fact that, that we could see the moons in the other images, that Jupiter is actually tilted this way, just as it should be. It's not tilted on its side, as claimed by Denise Chavez Goforth. It is orientated this way, as it should be. Now, let's go back to the, the video and hear what Denise had to say about the rings again. There you have it. This is Jupiter today. It's right on its side. These little red things here are Jupiter's rings. That's how we know it's on its side. These little red things here are Jupiter's rings and that's how we know it's on its side. Well, most people know that Saturn has rings because they're pretty obvious when you look at them through a small telescope. And we've all seen pictures of Saturn's rings. But not everyone knows that Jupiter and Uranus also have rings. Okay, let's get the funny jokes out of the way. Is there a ring around Uranus? Yes, there is. Okay, we've got that out of the way now. Yes, there is a ring around Jupiter and Uranus. And if you go to Wikipedia, or another website if you don't trust Wikipedia, the planet Jupiter has a system of rings known as Rings of Jupiter, or the Jovian Rings. It was the third ring system to be discovered in the solar system after those of Saturn and Uranus. It was first observed in 1979 by the Voyager 1 space probe and thoroughly investigated in the 1990s by the Galileo orbiter. It has also been observed by the Hubble Space Telescope and from the Earth for the past 23 years. Ground-based observations of the rings require the largest available telescopes. Now the Bradford Robotic Telescope is not 
one of the largest telescopes I believe it's a 14 inch telescope it is very similar to the telescope I use at my local observatory which is a 14 inch Mead LX200 you can go to the um, information uh, page on Bradford here and read all about their telescope the specifications on it and so on but you would certainly not be able to see the um, the rings of Jupiter from this telescope it would be impossible and as we've seen from the other images that were taken on this date we cannot see rings on Jupiter the only thing that we do see are overexposed images and blurring and images that are anything but rings and we've seen that the the planet is actually not tilted as claimed by Denise Chavez go forth it is exactly as it should be and all of this nonsense about it being tilted because of Nibiru is nothing but nonsense and so what if you try and talk to um, Denise about these claims well here's the result comments are disabled for this video as I mentioned in my earlier videos my attempts to contact Denise in the first place I tried to uh, present my information to her politely and I posted on her Facebook page she quickly became hostile and then she blocked me and I've had nothing but abuse from her followers who claim that I'm a troll and a shill and a paid disinformation uh, disinformation agent and everything else you can think of um, these people are supposed to be truth seekers yet they're not interested in the truth and any one that is, is attempting to to bring any truth into this and to investigate the facts and to to weed out the the truth from the fiction are shut out they're blocked they're um, they're abused and and this really says it all doesn't it comments are disabled for this video so there we have it I think we've taken a thorough look at that anyone can uh, join the Bradford robotic telescope uh, page of their website sign up for an account and uh, you can search out these images for yourself remember that this image was on the 17th of December not the 18th the job number is 174350 you can check it out yourself um, hopefully this will be the final video that I'll be doing about uh, Jupiter and Saturn and Denise Chavez go forth I think we've done this one to death um, but after all the abuse that I've copped from the truth seekers over this I think that the least that Denise and her followers could do is to front up with an apology and as for the abuse that I've copped from Tiff Pardo who insisted that I took take down my uh, truth seekers video simply because it mentions her name well let's have a look at the start of this video shall we at 29 seconds This is Tiff Pardo. Well, this is her avatar on Facebook. If you ever want some information with regard to Nibiru or the two suns, she would definitely be a person to go to. Another person. So there you have it. There's Denise Chavez go forth showing Tiff Pardo's profile, Facebook profile on her YouTube channel. I note that Tiff Pardo has been commenting on my videos using her, her full name. Tiffany Pardo and she's insisting that I remove my truth seekers video because I mention her name on it which she claims is a breach of her privacy well Tiff if you want me to remove my videos I think you're gonna have to ask Denise to remove hers as well that's enough of my rant I hope that's the end of it thank you for watching if you're still with me at this stage it's been a longer video I appreciate you watching as always, feel free to check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. I'll put a link in the description area for you. Thank you for watching.